Hello, everybody. Thank you to be there for this new session of the COPAUG seminar, uh, which is still in uh, our programmation for the Franco-Brazilian chair. We uh, had uh, been labelized by the, by the General Consulate of Sao Paulo, uh, of France in Sao Paulo. And today we are welcoming three uh, colleagues from three countries and institutions uh, to, to share about uh, uh, Saint-Joseph Island in the Ile du Salut archipelago in French Guiana, a famous penitentiary. Uh, and this, uh, uh, today this session uh, will uh, have uh, this title, A Visual Experience of Silence in Saint-Joseph. Um, we consider that it is a meaningful time to talk about Saint-Joseph because after 30 years of abandonment, this territory starts to be considered as a place to be managed in its all its dimensions, which means to be considered as a cultural and as well a natural heritage. 2018 was the year when this territory started to be managed with our first uh, speaker, Aurélie Schneider, which is uh, the Agamis Association leader, which is an association of uh, valorization and protection of the um, Ile du Salut, Archipelago. And uh, she started to work in this, uh, in this uh, function in 2018. It's also the year when our two of the speakers visited it and we'll talk about their experience there in, the, in this year. Uh, Gloria Lino uh, is um, our um, speaker from Georgetown University and she's uh, affiliated research also there. Uh, she teaches film writing and cultural diplomacy in the Portuguese speaking world as a lecturer from the Camões Portuguese Institute. She's also been working in the intersection of environmental psychology, imaging and medicine. Our third uh, speaker is Claire Rudelman, uh, which is a um, um, digital content uh, professor in King's College, uh, London and uh, which was who was part of uh, the uh, research program, Postcard from the Bain, um, which was uh, led by um, our colleague from Nottingham Trent University, Sophie Fogol, uh, who was speaking there like, just one month ago. Um, so through this seminar, we will intend to establish bridges between an academic reflection and the concrete political, social and cultural actions that have been taken in Saint Joseph. We will start first by talking about our experiences as visitors of Saint Joseph, what uh, both of the speakers had encountered, so felt there, and in what way their perception and visual experiences guide them through an understanding of the specificities of this territory as a carceral environment and its consequent silences. We intend there to confront the ideas and possi possible narratives that could emerge from experiences and academic reflection with the economical, social and political reality of this territory in order to point out possible solutions for the future of this place. The seminar today will have a very specific form as a discussion, as a real discussion, so we will not, uh, you will not uh, listen free uh, presentation uh, all after uh, all. You, uh, we will have a, a real dialogue and the public is part from this dialogue and you will be able to interact during all the seminar with questions in the chat, we will appear on the, on the screen and we will, which will be a part of our, of our talk today. So let's just begin. We are with our um, uh, colleagues and uh, I let the first slide go on there on the screen. So I'm just I'm just waiting from from the technical background. Okay, so welcome, please welcome to Aurélie, Gloria and Claire and uh, many thanks from the Copal group for, to, to, to share this moment with us. It's a, it's a great time for us. 
Um, so let let's start speaking together <laughs> and uh, and uh, and share uh, our our sc my screen there. So, uh, Otavio, can you put on? Fine. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm ready. Sorry, that's that's very fine. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will have a first a first view in our seminar. Uh, to enter into Saint Joseph and to see what is this island in its physical characteristic and how we can we experience this place in its materiality. And uh, by starting with uh, our experiences of this place. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel, to, to your invitation and thank you very much, Claire and Aurélie to, to be here and to take part of this conversation. Thank you very much. So my first, I arrived in Saint Joseph in December 2018, uh, 25. I was completely alone, so which is a privilege to, to visit uh, Saint Joseph. And uh, it was, uh, all the questions started it was an incredible experience that's why uh, we are i think for uh, we all that's why we are here and uh, <clears throat> we chose to talk uh, mainly about the physical characteristics because um, many people didn't visit it, uh, the island but also to uh, to have a conversation, how is how is a special experience to be there, to walk through this, uh, because it's a place that has been abandoned for th more than 30 years. And uh, because of that, the interview, uh, the, the interconnection between the physical world, the, the walls and the, the what was a prison, and it was today, uh, and nature is, a, is a incredible. In uh, in all kinds of uh, of ways, so uh, because it also is not uh, is is no longer uh, a prison, but it's not yet a, a forest. So this uh, this contact is uh, permit also the the atmospheric. When I was there, the light was uh, incredible. It was a very sun, sunny day, and uh, I think it's uh, these the atmospheric elements, the the sound, the the light, uh, uh, give all different experience, and we I learn really what is uh, to experiencing a place with all our entire body <laughs> in the first place, and uh, how it's important to. Because when we perceive the world around us, it's not just uh, we have this feeling that we choose to see something, but light guides us and uh, not drive us our attention to certain things and not others. And it is this singular experience and uh, that is uh, interesting. Yeah, I, I ag completely agree that it's a really special place and it's a really um, extraordinary experience to visit the island. Um, I'm actually quite interested as well in how maybe our perceptions of it in advance probably had quite a lot to do with shaping, you know, how we actually encountered it when we got there. Um, and I know I'd been like, I'd been really anticipating visiting for quite a while. It was part of this research project that Samuel mentioned, Postcards from the Ban, which is led by Sophie Fuggel. And so I was the postdoctoral researcher and we had planned this, this you know, quite extensive research trip to different, car, uh, you know, former carceral uh, sites, penal colony sites in French Guyana. And this, you know, San Joseph um, was kind of part of that much bigger complex of sites, you know, that are distributed throughout the throughout the sort of um, 
more coastal regions of, of the territory, uh, some are more inland in forests. But this was, you know, this is a really central kind of top of the list of, of important places to visit, you know, um, as part of that project. So we were, I was really, really looking forward to it um, and had sort of built it up quite a lot, you know. And the other aspect of that, I think, was that there are a lot of photographs online um, of Saint-Joseph uh, as well as the other islands, uh, Il Royal and Il du Diable, which is made famous by Dreyfus being interned there. But um, some of those photographs really kind of uh, create an expectation, I think, of quite dramatic ruins. And as Gloria says, the real vigorous presence of lots of trees and vines and plants and life kind of growing up through the ruins and becoming part of them. So that was certainly a lot of, I had a lot of expectations uh, about that because of the, the photos that circulate online. I think that, that we can add also that um, Saint Joseph is really um, a special place uh, because it's a tough place, it's a difficult place to to go. Um, even today, uh, you have to take a little uh, boat to uh, to a coast. You have to jump on uh, uh, on the on the island. And um, when I first went there, I was uh, with my family, so with my baby, with my mother-in-law who is not really uh, young. So um, we experiment also that um, it's, um, uh, you have to deserve this island. You have to, to fight to, uh, in some way, to, to go and visit it. Uh, it's um, difficult to accost. Uh, it's difficult to visit because you have to climb mm -hmm. upstairs. You have to fight the spiders, mm -hmm. if, you, if you are afraid of. Uh, so, um, it's um it's part of, uh, of uh, our reflection as um, uh, as uh, the association to, uh, to um, uh, uh, make it easier for the visit, but not too easy because the difficulty is also part of the experience. It's um, really a matter of balance, and we talk about that a lot when we were prepared when we were preparing this presentation. Uh, in Saint Joseph, everything is a matter of balance. So keep the bal keep it difficult in a, in a way, but uh, also uh, trying to make it um, more secure uh, for the visitors. Mm. Yes. So I think that becomes very apparent yes. on actually arriving in person where I found it, you know, coming from the UK, um, which doesn't have such a, a vigorous climate um, and sort of the way that vegetation grows is is really quite different. And I didn't have very much experience, you know, um, in, in, in a tropical climate uh, at all. And it really, it's very, it was very striking to me as a, as a visitor from kind of the, northwestern Europe that that was quite a different proposition and you really are you know you're, it's wet underfoot uh, there's uh, it's the, the elements are very present I think when you encounter start to encounter the island and the remains that are there the ruins mm -hmm. so it's uh, yes I, I have a very different experience from uh, you both because I have no idea what I was I I really it was a really surprise what I found there so that's why probably I, I took photos mainly of the details like this one because I was so surprised to find uh, such a 
such a, a rich place and a challenging one also. We must uh, remember that, that is in a, not just, uh, like I said, in a way of seeing it that is challenging, but it's uh, to access, the access to San Jose Island and also uh, the physical, it's a uh, danger also. We can see uh, if you go ahead when the slides are sometimes a trunk just uh, don't allow us to, to walk straight away so <clears throat> it uh, we we must see these two perspective i i saw mainly the, the aesthetic well, aesthetic one and uh, this uh, this kind of challenging my perception of a, of a new place but it can be also viewed from the point of view of dangers and to visitors of course so <clears throat> can you go ahead with the slides samuel <clears throat> so this is the I, I, I just I just want you to add it's so hard to go but after three four years there I, I couldn't go and I, I cancelled like three times because of the the wine because of the of the, the storms because of the COVID so I'm I'm moving from Guyana without being able to go to Saint Joseph which is a pity and I, I, I'm very glad to no more because of your own visit. Thank you for that. For instance, when we arrive here in the main building, I, I think it was my first. Uh, we arrived there, right? It's the yes. I if think, you, if you, yes, if you climb yes this way. Yeah. Ah, okay. So I arrived there in the first uh, at first, and uh, I was incredible delight. The all the light. Uh, go through all these um, these plans and uh, uh, I see that uh, also Claire took uh, lots of photos of details of plants and me too because this is this fragile and very beautiful red uh, roots oh, I don't think I think it's there are roots that are are all over the place mm -hmm. and uh, Mm -hmm. It was uh, it was the light the, and the, this uh, this incredible creativity of nature also that impressed me when I arrived here in this building. Yeah, this, this building is um, uh, a lot of people um, took photography of this building, uh, and um, we have the impression that uh, all these woods are really light, um, but in fact. If you look uh, on the right side, you can see that, that some trees uh, are pushing on the structure. And mm -hmm. uh, today we were forced to close, to close this building. So you cannot enter inside anymore mm -hmm. be because uh, there is a, a piece of, um, of um, I don't know the word in English, of the um, charpente. Uh, of, the, of the, the main structure, the main the roof. roof yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. A, a, a piece of the main structure fall uh, because of uh, a tree was pushing on it, uh, and uh, all this metallic structure is really, really fragile. So I'm afraid that um, this is going to collapse little by little, and uh, we. Uh, it, it's a real challenge because if we want to. Uh, restore it, um, it's going to be very expensive. And the question is, uh, what what do we want with this building? Um, can we just, uh, now the people can go uh, and see it from the, the back door on, on the photograph. Mm -hmm. So you can have a beautiful perspective on this building. And I think that it's uh, the best uh, way to to see uh, the the balance between nature and uh, and history uh, because um, this building is literally being eaten by uh, by the nature. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was impressive. I was very impressed also that this uh, at the same time that we encounter silence. Uh, in these ruins, uh, because it we we can feel the traces of a human presence that are, uh, 
are are also that is also anymore there. But um, we also encounter the presence of nature, like you said, a very strong presence, and. Um, so, and this invisible uh, presence of the cultural world. But at the same time, we must consider it, like you said, the fragility of these forms, because they were constructed to be as solid as possible to keep men close in, in the, there, in, in the, those little cells and these, on these large walls and iron bars. And these physical forms are collapsing. And at the same time, is uh, remember remembering that nothing is solid and nothing lasts. Also, so because life just continue is, uh, I don't know, just to <laughs> to have another perspective. I, I just want you to add that uh, all the pictures from the uh, slides uh, were taken by our. our uh, speakers today and it's, it's a bit uh, a mix of, of all of their works. <laughs> this makes me um, quite relieved to have visited before this happened, um, this collapse. I must say, even though I tend to kind of, uh, I want to champion a, a sort of sense of acceptance that we can't preserve heritage sites indefinitely, but um, that's always, the, that's not a, a sort of straightforward position. And I, I, I guess like all of us here have developed really quite a sense of, I mean, it sounds a bit odd to say, I suppose, but a fondness for this site, even though it's, you know, sort of classified as a kind of uh, dark heritage is the phrase that we use in English, which I think is a bit problematic but um it's it's kind of how it gets talked about currently um so I, I have no wish to see the ruins deteriorate in any active sense but i do think a sense of acceptance is important and it's that balance that Aurélie you were talking about you know striking between how you manage the trees and the growth and the speed of growth uh, as well as you know, consideration of the costs of maintaining a structure like this amid, you know, a, a kind of tropical forest environment. Do you think, is it permanently now going to be unavailable for visitors to step inside? Uh, inside this building, yes. I'm afraid that it's mm -hmm. going to be for, for a long time at least. Uh, but uh, I can my, I can go inside to, to take picture and sometimes to in, invite uh, other colleague, uh, but it's um, dangerous. You have to stay between the structure. So if one of them fall, it's not on your head. <laughs> so you have to uh, be really careful. But um, it's um, it's not only inside this building. It's uh, inside a lot of uh, buildings on Saint Joseph, but also uh, on uh, Ile Royale, um, which has uh, suffered a lot of the um, rain season uh, this uh, this year. Um, yes. So I, I was sorry, Gloria. I was just thinking that we accept very easily to lose our pe people or old people and just have pictures and souvenirs and maybe we can accept this from buildings also like, like it's we are only humans and it just lasts some time and uh, maybe we could have this new way of seeing buildings i think we have been all built by this idea of uh, millenary buildings from our churches or i don't know in europe but maybe our equatorial field makes us feeling things and thinking different, maybe. Yes, to accept, uh, as I said, that uh, <laughs> the things are fragile and uh, they disappeared also. And in, in particular, in San Joseph, it's very difficult because it's 
there's no more boundaries between nature and uh, uh, natural forms and uh, man uh, forms. We can we building it every and we can see. Can you show the, the other slides? So this is for uh, it was for a reflection about uh, how Saint Joseph is an experience of a world in itself in the sense that he's no longer uh, a prison and no yet a forest and uh, these boundaries didn't doesn't uh, exist anymore it's so that's why it uh, requires a special visual attention uh, and it's challenging even in that way how we can do with this place and uh, it uh, it's challenging also because it um, we must uh, uh, pay attention or the way you want to, to preserve it and to see it, as you said, Samuel, I totally agree what you said. Mm -hmm. So if you can, so you, you must consider also, and uh, the, the slides that we are showing next is about that, how human and natural forms are intertwined. And um, like this example, for instance, to the straight lines of the walls that you can find in the walls, you must also be attentive to the what kinds of lines nature is adding. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to. And you can add, I, I was just thinking, just a joke, but you can add also the natural line of the um, uh, insects, you know, uh, there are a lot of uh, little insects in uh, uh, ant, no ant. I don't know. Yes, that. yes, ant, 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 ant. ant. Uh, and they are going in line, and uh, <laughs> it's also something very specific in some. Yes, a lot of ant everywhere. So uh, lines everywhere of ants. Everywhere, bringing leaves, and um, journalists always want to film that because it's typical of Saint Joseph. So the forest is eating the monuments and the ant are eating the forest. <laughs> like yes. we, we see also uh, like with the colors that uh, nature and walls are mixing out like like yes. you, you like you have the same exactly the same color between the the roof of the of the wall the, the tree and uh, and the wall like the same yes. contrast so <laughs> everything yes. is mixing and what is covering the trunk is also covering the, the walls. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And the trunk is of the, quite of the color of the wall also. Like it's, yes. you can see a very big parallel in this. You can see picture. also in the next slide. slide. I thought this was, this, this, uh, was amazing. Others, uh, all the, there's not just a, a question of uh, geometrical forms like this one, because we can see different lines, the line of the world, the straight line of the world, the line of the trunk, but also another plant that is uh, like uh, forming another kind of line. And it, how everything is dynamic. It, I, I have the feeling that uh, all of this was in movement. And this one, it's incredible. <laughs> I like this one. Just like the, the trunk is, is trying to escape from the cells. It's really strong. And uh, what's uh, extraordinary in Saint Joseph is that you can uh, feel uh, really uh, a lot of uh, different feelings, strong feelings when you visit. Strong. Yes. Yeah, and you, you can build uh, your own history uh, while visiting it. Um, even if you don't know a lot of thing about uh, the history of the of Saint Joseph, you you can really uh, experience something, and um, and and that's also a challenge to uh, restore this uh, this site. It's not to visit a site; it's to experience it. It's, 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 I I don't know if I I am very clear, but it's really two way of. Uh, of thinking, uh, it, not only visiting and learning, it's really experiment, experimenting with all of your body, uh, as you were saying, Gloria. 
Yes, because it's uh, as uh, and it was uh, for me it was an incredible experience also because I've been reading the Scottish anthrop Scottish anthropologic um, and uh, anthrop I'm sorry, Claire, can you help me? <laughs> anthropologist. Anthropologist. Uh, team in gold for a long time, for many years. So I, I really felt that what he said, that his, um, all his research about walking and walking through ruins and rock, walking on these places, and how to also to remember, as he said, that materials as histories also, like you said, Aurélie, it's not so, it's not just Saint Joseph, it's not a, a kind of place where we arrive and just a, an object to our interpretation. It's a, a life itself, it's a world in itself, and it's not just a kind of interpreta interpretation, it's a kind of a building uh, to be attentive and to listen to this, uh, this place also. Yeah. This picture is very expressive because, like, it's nature is creating a, a narrative there. Like, you you have the, the tree going out from its cell and go and and freeing the other cells. Like, we have the the sensation, the feeling that it's a, it's an inmate who go who is freed and who goes to 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 to, to give freedom to to its its other inmates. You know, like it's. It's a very strong picture, yes. Mm -hmm. So we don't have them. Mm -hmm. So it was the main uh, guidelines that we have to talk about uh, also. So it's, uh, it's already an inhabited space. It's already a dynamic one, a dynamic space. And we have to just not, uh, we cannot just arrive and uh, saying it is a, a tabula rasa, <laughs> but uh, something that is, uh, it's on a world that is uh, its own histories or stories. <laughs> the, the two. <laughs> So one of the most uh, incredible experiences that I have also, so none of these exist anymore already, if I, if I understood, because uh, the leaves have, have been removed. But yes. uh, in, inside the cells, it was incredible. The, that's why I said the wind, the movement, the light. The, it, it was like, uh, unfortunately, I, could, <laughs> I didn't... Uh, make a, a video, but uh, these leaves were in movement all the time, all the time. And it was, uh, it was incredible and an incredible experience. It, it, to be in a narrow space and to be in a space that was once uh, a kind of uh, um, difficult space to live uh, for all the things that we know, how can it be alive like that now? With the leaves, because we if, if we remove the leaves, we don't experience any more this movement, of course, because we have just the iron bar, bars. Can you show the other ones, uh, Samuel, please? Mm -hmm. So we could find no longer only squares of iron, the shadows of the squares of iron, but dynamic shadows and lights. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I don't know if you, if you want to add something. Um, maybe we can add that um, in Saint Joseph, you can uh, visit the cells uh, alone um, uh, in uh, other sites uh, in French Guiana. Uh, it's rare to be alone. If you go to Saint Laurent, you will be in a group. If you go to Ile Royale, there are a lot of tourists. Um, if you go to the Anamit, uh, there are uh, always people uh, around, uh, noise around. But in Saint Joseph, um, there are uh, less tourists, and uh, it's um, open. You are alone in uh, these cells, and um, you can take your time. 
and it's very important to experiment this side. Yes. You are, you're not in a urge to follow a guide tour. You're not, you can really take your time and um, look at the shadows, look at the leaves and uh, listen to the silence and you can dive in your in imaginary and, uh, and that's yes. very, uh, very specific in Saint-Joseph. Yeah, it's when uh, I see the both pictures, we see how much we need pictures to realize all the visual experiences we, we can have in, in Saint Joseph. And, and what in this image, we can also have a, a, a sensorial experience, like because yes, we imagine course. like the wind, the sound in the leaves, and all of this. And uh, how much I, it, it makes me thinking about like Bachelard and, and, and the space poetic, like because. It's it 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 makes me like when you are in the main building. It's a very global experience. Like you know, like you have a big space, and and I, I felt this in all the on all, all the penitentiaries. You know, like you have a global view, which is very strong because you have this nature, this building. Everything is very strong. And after you go in little cells or little details, and you are always going from a, um, very specific, very how strongly separated spaces and also very large spaces. So it makes um, I, 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 um, a very, very strong experience. I think this this way of going from the very tiny to the very large, to very powerful, to the very poetic and very tiny thing, a weak thing of a leaf or something like that. And yes just a reflection mm -hmm. thank you so as you said also a place that allows other physical experience uh, as walking through for instance in that uh, this image what is no longer a corridor but a new challenging way of seeing an aerospace like you like you said also is another dimension of this uh, narrow and little space and the uh, large space at the main building so if you go mm -hmm. and this uh, claire uh, you experience this place with water which is another <laughs> you are we cannot hear you with with hey uh Claire is as a sound problem <laughs> oh um, I, I need to move yeah. because of... Um, so I was saying that without water, without humidity, you can just walk and it's uh, it's probably not easy for everybody, but it's it's uh, now with the water, it's uh, a very di different experience because it's really dangerous, as uh, Aurélie uh, pointed out previously, yeah. all the, it's a space that can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. yeah. In, in, in the notes... Just, Sorry, already gone. No, yeah, th there is no shelter uh, in Saint Joseph. On the Ile Royale, you can go to the restaurant. You can go in some uh, places uh, that have a roof. But in Saint Joseph, uh, there is no shelter. So there is. If it if it rain, you have to you know, to continue your visit, and uh, in, and it's really um, a different way to to experiment Saint Joseph. Um, because you you can see also that uh, in Guyana, in French Guyana, when it's raining, everything is uh, different. Uh, everything is uh, difficult, and um, uh, and in Saint Joseph, it's it's the same. Um, and I, I like this photograph because you also see that sometimes, uh, even if you want to work to study the monuments, you can't because of the trees you are in uh you can go further further uh because you are blocked uh, by the trees and uh you have to uh to, to turn and go back on, on your on your steps yes yeah. mm -hmm. yeah, it's yeah. we we saw photo pictures where um, nature was inspiring a new freedom but it's also a new a new, a new yes. wall and uh yes. 
and it's also a living place where nature is building walls after humans you know like uh, and create new circulations water even water creates new circulation we know how much in kiana where when it's raining the circulations uh, move and we are we are not the masters of this even we have a big technology and, so, uh, and it's yes and it reminds us that uh, our eyes and our body moves with the world, right? Because um, the way we, 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 when we visit some other places, everything is clean, everything is uh, already uh, in, a, in a comfortable way to walk in. And uh, Saint Joseph, it's not uh, like that. Is uh, we have this, uh, this strong feeling that uh, all around us is moving also. And our way of moving must uh, include these movements of all the environment around us. That's why it's a, a strong experience also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the day, uh, can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> Good. Uh, on this day, uh, it had been raining and that water was um, maybe half a foot or so deep and I was wearing these shoes that were uh, kind of shoes for, for going in the water because I was anticipating this but um, it was strange because I'd started thinking about this extremely large tree root or branch on, on the ground um, it seemed almost it, it had quite a presence um, and I, I started worrying slightly about wildlife that might be <laughs> in the water <laughs> yes. or that it might make me lose my footing um, and drop my camera, which was, you know, uh, very important not to do. So I'd arrived to this really iconic tree, which I'd seen photographed repeatedly online in people's shared photos. Um, so it was really a sight that I felt I needed to sort of track down and document the tree as part of the documentary photography part of, of why I was there. Um, but it definitely also it turned me back in the way that you're describing. And I didn't feel that it was a good idea to try and push ahead further because I would, I'd fall over. Mm -hmm. It's quite but interesting it's to be turned back yes. by a tree. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it remembers also this, the color of this water because it's the color of the water in Guyana. When we arrive there, it's so incredible that uh, this sea, it's not just a sea. It's a, a kind of moving into a forest, uh, the forest moving into a, a sea. And uh, um, uh, the mud that we can find in an in a open space, uh, just in a, in a beach, the first time I thought it was rocks, and in the in the you know it was the forest that was coming, and this beach was uh, evolving to be a forest, like uh, in the all the uh, the coast, and um, yes, it's a challenge just to 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 put your feet in this water or to swim in the in the beach in Guyana, <laughs> because we we cannot see. It's just that we have to accept yeah. that we cannot see you. Mm -hmm. There's That's also true. quite a lot of play, I think, given to, uh, well, in, in some accounts of the ban, um, there's quite a lot of emphasis given to the danger of the, the water surrounding the islands, um, and especially uh, in Papillon, and I think in Bene Belbenois as well, there is this discussion about sharks, um, and it's difficult for us to arrive at kind of a certain conclusion about whether the waters, you know, were full of sharks or if they were potentially attracted because they had a, a practice of um, discharging people's uh, bodies into the water. Yes. Um, but so that, that mythology almost of the islands really kind of conditioned my visit in a sense and it became a real point for me to to deliberately take the opportunity to swim off the catamaran before we arrived onto the island of onto San Jose. The island. <laughs> and it was just me and this young boy in the group of this catamaran who took the opportunity and I admit 
to thinking about sharks while that was happening but think you know think that this is you're experiencing this kind of mental power of a myth but the reality is you're here with your your body and you're sensing the environment around you and it's very pleasant so the myth is yeah. telling you a completely different kind of telling you about a completely different experience in a, in a sense and they're happening simultaneously Mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's very interesting, Claire, what you say, and uh, we can analyze water like in, in Saint Joseph it, because we have many waters, in fact, because uh, Claire, Gloria was saying it was like uh, this mud colored water in, even in the sea, but like uh, Il du Salut are the only place where the sea is like in Caribbean, in French Guiana. And so you have a very contrasted experience of water there because you have this mud water. And also this very beautiful blue water in in, in, in just a few feet, few meters yes, away, just a few. <laughs> and uh, but this beautiful sea is a forbidden sea. Like it's it's like a, a poisonous candy there. It's beautiful. You want to go, but it's very dangerous because of of of, of, uh, of uh, streams. Uh, of sharks and so on and uh, but as Claire said like sharks are part of the myth too and what is very interesting is when you you visit all these penitentiary sites in, in, in French Guiana mm -hmm. like reality is both between past and present but also between reality and myth yes. and everything mm -hmm. is is mixed and even if this question, question of water is quite mythologic then there so yes uh, another part of the experience of and of the nature now uh, what i was saying that it's the the fact that uh, no boundaries in a certain along uh, the long coast of guiana there is no boundary uh, between the sea and the forest they can i was talking it was yes. a, a very new experience for yes me. Uh, and to complete what as I was saying about, like, often in French Guiana, like the, the mythologic realities, the ima social imaginaries, mm -hmm. to, to speak as an historian, as are more powerful than reality. Like, it's it, like, even for, for Guianese themselves, like, uh, it, it's, it builds you and, and your identity the way you think Guiana on the long term. And, and, and it's very strong in these kind of places. Yeah, that that particularly interested me as well in terms of like the visual depiction of the Ile du Salut and, and the ban as a whole, but that you have this very heavily um, kind of tourist framed um, encounter with the photography by searching online in advance to, to learn about the place. Um, and this type of photograph, I was a little bit reluctant to take in a sense because it really focuses on the most dramatic, like the most enlarged kind of vegetative elements. It's almost, um, it feels almost fetishizing, you know, to go and kind of look for this, this tree um, and then to kind of recreate that sort of much repeated view, because it, it, it to me, I was very wary of um, kind of just re-perpetuating tropes uh, that European like, colonial powers have perpetuated about tropical zones, uh, zones in a kind of environmental sense, you know, the kind of extremity, the idea of like rains that are so challenging at times these you know it was difficult it was an interesting but kind of challenging thing to me to try to hold uh, together I suppose the idea of not fetishizing the place but also accepting that those fetishes in if we can say like the European colonial mind they did arise from kind of real real encounters with some of these spaces it is true to say i think that when you're from um northwestern europe you know you're not familiar with kinds of vegetation that grow so fast and that have such large leaves and you're not really familiar with such strong downpours of rain 
Um, and so I was, I think that's a tricky line to tread between trying not to fetishize the place, but kind of being truthful. How, how, how are we truthful in documentary photography, but trying to be truthful about what you find in front of you on the day that you're able to attend and, and take photographs, you know. Mm -hmm. And the, it, it doesn't really have a resolution, I don't think. I think it's, yes, it's uh, to prepare our, ourselves to make plans before we arrive to these places and to to, to avoid dangers, to avoid uh, what the, the bad parts of the experience are also... Um, it's it's an approach uh, this that's why this place for me was an incredible space because it's uh, open up the possibility of considering that making and taking actions in this world is also about um, encounter uncertainty uh, to 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 be open to create uh, another way of saying to accept what the environment is telling you rather than what we have already known and to 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 embrace this place without a, a ready-made plan to follow a path that we don't know where it it leads us that's is big i think it's because of all of that that we think this this place is challenging right mm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah i think another thing that is actually quite challenging from a visual point of view is the parts of the island and the views from the island that are very kind of conventionally picturesque and beautiful mm -hmm. uh, and that was something that Sophie and I thought about a lot in our research was this kind of difficulty of um, or, uh, things like palm trees I think have been very kind of over coded in the, the European imagination as signs of luxuriousness, right, of island fantasies, you know, very, um, especially maybe for those of us who live in environments where, you know, we don't, we don't naturally encounter palm trees. Um, they have quite a strong connection, I think, to sort of fantasies about remoteness of islands, luxuriousness of islands. And islands, as, you know, as kind of quite positive places of escape or tranquility, um, reflection. And so we were kind of interested in looking at, well, you know, how do you photograph? We do, I didn't want to just photograph ruins, um, but also some of those aspects, you know, where you're looking at blue sea framed by, you know, graciously curving palm trees. And then you're saying, this is a photograph of, a former penal colony um, and sort of trying to sit with that um, contrast a bit, I suppose, not to pretend that it doesn't, that that issue doesn't exist. Because mm -hmm. yeah. a lot of the island is not ruins or, right, yes. or, or I noticed a fair few visitors, you know, strolling around this part uh, of the ruins when I was there and I was sort of spending a couple of hours in the, the places that they were just passing through in a few minutes. And that's not to say they weren't having a valuable experience, though. It, it's not a sort of, I'm not putting forward, you know, an idea of like a competitive intensity of attention. I think they probably have a really valuable experience of passing <laughs> through and being interested for a, a while but then moving on, you know, to go for a swim on the beach before going yes. back on the boat and it being part of a rich experience that tour I don't want to sort of condemn the, the tourist figure, you know, completely and say that they're inattentive. Of course not, yes. I or, I, or I will talk more about this, but this palm tree imaginary is very interesting because it's part of the attraction in, in, in Du Salut also and Royal Island as a real palm tree postcard view and uh, is very visited for that even from local people which are very majoritarian in, in, in the in the into salut tourism and this imaginary from europe has been completely um, absorbed by 
by the local people, like uh, integrated and uh, and there, m m many Guyanese guys want to have this experience, which is West Indies West Indian experience in their mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But interestingly oh. to me, or I'm I'm not a biologist or a naturalist of any kind. Um, I'm yeah, you know, I was there as a sort of photographer and um, someone with a background in cultural studies and art history, but um, I wasn't able quite to ascertain what the natural history of the arrival of the palm, the, the coconut, had been, but it is also an incoming species to the islands, right? So I, I was kind of curious about just a sort of connection with um, a, a sort of symbolic, um, evocative kind of connection with uh, the idea of uh, populations of people, you know, being forcibly transported to this island. Uh, and now also we see these, these palm trees flourishing there, you know, who are, who are, which is also an imported arriving species. Just a remark from Otavio, which is in the backstage is from Technical and which is uh, very uh, strong Amazonian <laughs> identity, and uh, yes, we are speaking about more cocoa trees than palm trees because yes. palm trees are very part of the Amazonian culture and very used in agriculture and so on. But they are not associated with Amazonian palm trees uh, with this coconut imaginary. Uh, it's very different thing, you know, and. Uh, so it's part of the forest in Guyana, also these palm trees, not on, on in the seaside. And yes, many. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I could add. Mm -hmm. I didn't uh, integrate it in the in the slide, but one of the most uh, <clears throat> uh, meaningful experience was the, were the, the palm trees in uh, in Saint Joseph. And, uh, and something is interesting is that. Um, uh, we are not um, thinking the same when uh, we are cutting a tree or a coconut tree. Uh, I was just thinking about that while you were um, talking about your uh, experience because we have uh, cut a lot of coconut trees uh, during uh, the last the past year, uh, and. Um, it's always really simple to take the decision to, to cut a coconut tree because there are a lot of these everywhere. Um, uh, it's going to be a, a problem um, because it's, um, it, it, it invades every um, place. Uh, and we have not the same feeling when uh, we are talking about another tree. Um, and um, coconut tree can have, um, how do you say, a patrimonial va value mm -hmm. uh, on on the beach because there is uh, uh, this uh, feeling, this exotic feeling. Uh, so uh, we are uh, thinking about keeping them mostly on the on the beaches on the side part of the islands. Um, but the trees, we are uh, thinking um, how we can manage to keep uh, a lot of them uh, because they are part of uh, the visit. So it's strange to see that uh, even if a coconut tree is um, I, like uh, uh, the, the, the first view of everybody uh, when you arrive on the island, uh, we as um, uh, people who are uh, uh, dealing with uh, it uh, on everyday life. And uh, mm -hmm. we are um, thinking as less valuable uh, uh, than other trees. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the, this, uh, this slide that, uh, with this um, quotation of uh, Tim Edenser in the, the book of uh, Anthropology Studies of Creativity and Perception by Tim in Gold was to remember the, that uh, 
the fact that we walk in this uh, uh, challenging, when we can say that, places, that ruins in particular, that becomes, we, our body also becomes skillfully habituated to sensations, dangers, uh, yes, as we already said, but also attractions, because it's an attractive also, as we also said, the Saint Joseph. And these develop alternative ways of thinking, sensing, and moving. So uh, it was just uh, to remember that. So another uh, important question of our conversation, it was to remember that uh, this, um, this fact that is a life forms on new, new human life forms that we can uh, fi find in San Joseph are also tells a story on itself of abandon and silence and silence about the bind, not just about San Joseph, but silence also about uh, uh, the lives, the suffering uh, of people that live there and uh, the ab abandon also. I, I don't so. <clears throat> yes, the, the life is also the dead life, you know, like yes. uh, mm -hmm. it gives us a feeling uh, of death more concretely than these strange stories from the from the bind. We are a bit far from us and we, with the screen of, of, of the narratives here is a real feeling of something down and f f uh, fold on, on, the, on the soil. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, but the complexity of this carceral environment is already in the choice of uh, an island. It is in self, uh, it was a space that it was being chosen to put aside members of a society and uh, those humans that were considered a threat for the well being of a community and uh, to keep order in the society. Uh, but it's also a way of hiding feelings of pain and suffering. So we must, there's lots of stories in that place. Yes. Stories of the nature, stories of abandon. So mm. sto because we, when we are in these narrow spaces, it's difficult not to think about the people that live there and our day of suffering was also hidden, not just in the in different bodies, in in the in an island, and inside the building, and inside the cell. And, and, and it's yes. also a real art masterpiece because when you see this picture, like how um, um, many lines, how uh, um, many harmony in 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 the colors, like there is this line from the soul to the to the sky, you know, like it's it's so much expressive is uh, this way where nature goes on with the walls and, and yes. in, in, in the iron. It's very impressive, yeah. all these details. Uh, something uh, which is very frustrating, uh, at least for me, very frustrating in Saint Joseph uh, is um, the silence of the walls itself, because in the cells of uh, Ile Royale, uh, you have a lot of marks, uh, um, drawings, uh, and paintings, and uh, so on. And uh, in the cells, in the asylum, um, and uh, and sometimes outside. Uh, but in the cell of Saint Joseph, there is nothing visible on the walls. So the silence is also here because um, we don't, we cannot see. Um, if uh, the prisoners have let uh, some uh, testimony of their uh, uh, of their life, I, I think we can find some, but we have to uh, um, wash the walls and to do it very mm. uh, uh, precisely. Um, I don't know how, uh, and I'm not sure that we can still find something. So it's really frustrating because um, we know that the prisoners in Saint Joseph were specific, and they will have so much to to tell us uh, 
with uh, these marks. Uh, and so the silence is still here. It's, it's Saint Joseph is really a silence island. Yeah, I think that's really interesting in um, in relationship to some of the other sites as well. If you are visiting um, other sites of the ban and looking at their remains, there are you know places where you can see graffiti quite clearly. Um, and I uh, I tried to follow um, a technique that um, and the ac uh, academic Laura Makatakni talks about who. Um, is a, an archaeologist and has worked on like prison graffiti um, is kind of using different ways um, of using photography to try to make yes. marks and writing on the wall much more legible. Um, yes. I, w I wasn't successful <laughs> in my small attempt at doing that but um, the idea that I guess that contributes to an idea that there can there could be more um, more than just the visible physical ruins that we kind of risk losing if we take a sort of, you know, very laid back or a very realistic approach, you know, to allow, as we were talking about before, of kind of allowing ruins to to recede, to crumble, to fall, you know, might these kinds of traces that you're talking about be something that we lose without knowing? It's kind of tricky. Yes, we, we have done yes. some photogrammetry um, so, uh, on uh, on the asylum on Ile Royale and it's really worthy because we can read a lot of graffitis with this uh, specific technique and I am working on an inventory of every graffitis on Royale but it's really a huge work so we can talk about that in four years <laughs> Maybe. I would love yeah. to. <laughs> yes, Aurelie is, is, is going on very good uh, projects like cir circulations and graffitis, which are, I think, so much interesting. And I, I was thinking like the Van de Zanamit experience is quite similar also in terms of, of silence. And we, it was a, a reclusion, reclusion uh, site. And it's very, it's very interesting how much people, when they go there as visitors, have a um, different, different way of different, different behaviors, uh, and this intense suffering you, you had in, in Saint Joseph and Bandizanamit uh, is not known by all the visitors. But I don't know this; it creates a, an atmosphere. Even the walls, also the silenced walls. And uh, and the atmosphere is completely completely different than Saint Joseph or Spain Il, um, Il Royal or Saint Laurent, which are opened into the the life and the human life like uh, very strongly. I think in connection with that idea of silence as well, something that really struck me about the experience of visiting Saint Joseph is that there's, I think, really no um, sort of signage giving you a narrative as to what you should think and what you should understand about the history. Um, and that's that's not a criticism, actually. I'm, I'm someone who um, regularly takes photographs of signs at heritage sites, um, perhaps excessively. But I think it's quite a careful thing to negotiate um, how much one or how much a site like chooses to tell people what they should be understanding about this place and what they should be thinking about it. And I found the experience, you know, of walking around Saint Joseph and exploring it, even with a kind of, you know, an awareness of which, which kinds of buildings had been where and something about the history and the experiences that prisoners had had there. But it's very free um, and it, it gives you a lot of scope to experience the place without that being kind of directed by you know an institutional voice yeah. or a kind of authority voice telling you what you should be thinking which is interesting it does leave scope for not coming away perhaps with very much knowledge or understanding of the site but i i found that extremely appealing 
as a visitor and as someone I think coming from a culture that really places a lot of emphasis on heritage preservation and narrating sites, curating things very carefully. And it tends to make me want to have an experience uh, or it tends to make me more want to rebel against the the kind of narrative line that you're being given, you know, um, and it makes you want to go off in a different direction or, um, I don't know. So I think you're, you're given quite a, you're given quite a free reign as a visitor in terms of the interpretation that you make, which I think is quite respectful of the visitor in a way. Mm-hmm. We, we have, uh, now we have signs on Ile Royale and um, what we have done is um, trying to put the signs um, not too close to the monuments, to the buildings. So you can have your own experiment. And if you want to, you can go to the sign and read it. But you are not struck at first by this uh, academic speech. You have at first the building and then you can go to the speech. You can have information and um, on these signs, they are really, uh, it's really a short text. Um, to to have a chronologic, chronological chronological frame and uh, a lot of pictures, um, maps uh, and uh, old old uh, photographs. So more pictures and texts. So it was um, a way of um, explaining, but not too far. It was and um, yes. maybe uh, maybe if we have enough money <laughs> we can uh, we are willing to 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 do the same on saint joseph uh, but uh, with the same um the same uh, view uh, not not a lot of signs and uh building first so uh just one sign for the reclusion and uh, really aside from the building so if you want to go inside the building, you can experiment it, and then you can have more information. Um, but it's quite difficult to find the right place for these signs. Yes, but we have to remember that uh, the acad- we, we talk about the word academic. Academic, uh, we have to remember that is not just uh, um, information, historical information, which is very interesting also, of course, to give about that place, but it's also uh, the academic reflection allow us to have concepts and to have points of view and to have uh, um, a, a, a ground, a theoretical, I would say, ground that allow us to say this place in this uh, wilderness also so we must consider that that uh, the academic reflection allow us not just to guide us to see the, those places but are uh, to be f- to to give us others perspectives of saying this place rather than just historical ones or just with sensitiveness uh, that's why I, I was thinking about uh, uh, in particular, like I said, Timing Gold, the anthropology of Timing Gold, but also uh, um, the way of seeing of uh, Merleau-Ponty, uh, the French philosopher, that uh, allow us to think this place in a in a dynamic way, and also Conguiem, the 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 reflection of uh, the philosophy of uh, Conguiem, it's very important also to think about what is life, what is uh, our, our life is also, because we we have a tendency in a journalistic perspective in the 80s uh, to see that place just like uh, is, has been eaten for, uh, by the forest and destroyed by the forest, but we can see these places in a creative uh, way of seeing life because life has been in a certain point, uh, I don't know how to say it, but um, uh, is like 
life also have to compose with the brutality uh, that uh, it it has encountered, right? Because it's uh, about life. This place is uh, is about life. <laughs> Yeah, and I guess so, um, that kind of resonates with something that I ended up focusing on in in the work. The, the partly the documentary photography I was I was intending and planning to go and do uh, at at this site, but um, I'd also started gathering plants um, and pressing them, so flowers and leaves and. Um, I'd started seeing that as a, it was sort of a, a, um, a serendipitous kind of development. Uh, it wasn't something that we'd planned in the project, but a colleague gave us a flower press and it sort of, I don't know, in a sort of experimental, free flowing kind of way, it became something that I started doing. And I was very aware of like, in that I was repeating uh, this a very colonial move of um, plant hunters who were sent out from uh, lots of European um, botanical organizations, especially they were sent, you know, to go and obtain materials from colonial or prospectively colonial sites um, and kind of take possession of them, uh, not just document them and create drawings of them and so on, but actually, you know, take, take up the physical material um, and transport it back to their the the imperial center, um, and I was very aware of kind of repeating that gesture, but perhaps in a sort of naive, um, uh, art, you know, in an artistic way. Um, but that was something that kind of came to function for me as a way of sort of trying to pay tribute to lives of real historically existing banyards, the, the imprisoned hum fellow humans, you know, who have actually lived lives in this place, um, as well as many of them who have died in that place as a result of the penal colony. Um, but in a way, looking at the life, the sort of vigorousness, the vivacity of the trees and the leaves and the plants, um, became a way to sort of try to to pay tribute to the lives that have previously um, existed in the same site, but to do so in a kind of oblique way. So it's kind of symbolic, a, a symbolic layering to add to the visual that you can actually perceive when you're there. It's... Yeah, this is the this is a collage that I made. So as well as the documentary photography, I made a series of fifteen digital collages, um, and this one um, kind of takes a view of the Il du Salut as a group, um, and it incorporates. So the the naming scheme that I arrived at is to to name each place, uh, different sites of the penal colony spread across French Guyana and New Caledonia in the Pacific um, to include the names of each site where I gathered either one of these images or one of the maps or a piece of fabric uh, in the same way that I started collecting plants. I, I also started collecting kind of fragments of fabric uh, that I would find at the different sites. So this tries to take a sort of um, view d'ensemble, right? this, this sort of view of the whole of, of the Ile du Salut um, but to, to bring in some interconnections with other places of the ban that have um, kind of co-constituted it as a penal site, right? Because it's, it's a place that you encounter in a somewhat separate way from the mainland, right? Like you can't see the mainland any longer when you're on the islands. Um, you, can, you can view the other islands in this small archipelago, but you can't view any of those those other connections um, to the infrastructure of the band, but also to its geographical existence. 
Um, so I was sort of wanting to to kind of allude to that connectedness mm -hmm. in this image. And the red lines are GPS drawings of the track that you take on the catamaran. So you approach and you go um, loop around uh, to look very closely at Ile du Diable, where, where Andreyfus's hut, but you're not allowed to go onto the island. Um, so you sort of slow down and look at it and then go all around Royal again. Uh, and this sort of charts my presence there. Oh, this is a different one of um, part of the ruins of Saint Joseph, and I just sort of put it forward because it um, it was a moment when I I kind of had a bit of a failure as a documentary photographer in a way. Um, I'd been uh, I think it had rained, and I just had this kind of crisis moment of moisture had gotten onto the lens. Uh, it was on the viewfinder. Uh, it was on my glasses uh, and sweat was coming from my face into my eyes. So the whole kind of apparatus of trying to see clearly, right, and to document uh, in, a, in a kind of useful, high quality way, which you're supposed, right, th this is a very important thing to be able to do as a, as a photographer, um, it just completely collapsed and I got I was really worried that some moisture had actually gotten you know, inside the lens, but um, it was actually on the outside. So I immediately then kind of corrected this problem, but it made me very aware of the, the environment, but also the body as part of the environment, you know, generating sweat, generating heat that is causing problems in this interaction between all of my optical devices, you know, that enable me to to see and create representations for other people to see. And so I, I, I ended up, I'm quite fond of, of the image in a way because it reminds me of that sort of, um, the difficulty of, I don't know, pretending that you're sort of seeing clearly and it's a very partial view. It's, you know, it's very idiosyncratic in some ways. It's not necessarily what somebody else would look at the same place and think was important to take a photo of. Um, so the, how, you, how partial we are as when we're being documentary photographers. Uh, it, it, it gives me two reflections. This photograph is, I think, so, so important in terms of perceptions. And uh, as an historian, we, we, we don't have this kind of relationship with the field as social scientists have. But... Um, what I said, like in, in the first times I was searching about uh, the, the, um, the penal colonies, I was telling, like, I'm in French Guiana, but my archives are in, are in France, so it's not a big advantage. And this picture m makes me think how much it was important to be in my field to understand so much, like, and perception things, uh, and written things but so important to, to, to feel this experience of being there in Guyana and there jailed in Guyana. And um, your photograph can make us feel this without being on the field. And I think how much is important to have this kind of materials. And the second uh, reflection I have is that our penal colonies there are, are, are situated and these are Amazonian penal colonies, you know, which is which is a part of uh, of our analysis, which is always far from us. Like, yes, it is a forest, okay, but yeah, we, you, you can have this kind of picture in Cotijuba Island, for example, in, in Para State. Uh, you can have this in Clevelandia do Norte, which is a Brazilian camp there in Amapa State. You know, you are you are in the Amazonian field, which is a part of our analysis, and uh, your picture also expresses that so much. So yes, thank you for this tremendous work. Yes. Yes, and it's important to remind, uh, in, a, in even in the academic perspective, that it's always about someone, about a person, about the human eyes that is behind the camera.
right? So, and the honesty to say, this is a point of view about uh, San Joseph. This is not the realities of San Joseph. It's me behind the camera uh, with all the difficulties. Uh, and that is very important to remind us even is uh, in academic perspective. We cannot see everything. We cannot, uh, it's not just about uh, about us, it's about uh, all the environment is also interfering in our, our way of seeing. Yeah, and I think it also, or to me, it seemed to provide an opportunity to speculate about experiences that Banyalt may have had in this place because just as a, uh, not a way of trying to um, kind of identify with anybody who was imprisoned there, because I'm, I think that's a bit beyond, but I was wondering for Banyard who cannot see, right, what access, I think the access was pretty limited to um, glasses or, you know, any kind of appropriate medical treatment in general, but if you go around in your everyday, um, you know, apprehending the world visually and your vision is impaired, it's a completely different experience um, of the place. And so I was just, I sort of thought it was, well, it's an opportunity to just kind of remember how much your vision is mediated by the society that you come from, by the level of access to technology that you have, you know, the access to, um, care and kind of appropriate corrective devices for your vision that that your vision is is so much kind of filtered through these different really advanced technological devices to arrive at this kind of depiction yeah and uh So uh, now to, in the final part of our conversation, we would like to, to remember that San Joseph is constantly evolving and uh, it's a dynamic space that demands that we look at it in dynamic ways also. It's not just about a, a visual attention, but it's a, a way of seeing uh, uh, can you can you show uh, Samuel the, the the slide the next slide also so um, of its uh, preservation and I think it's the, the both photo are from Aurélie by uh, Aurélie I'm sorry and she can yeah see. It, um, th this wall collapsed um, last year. Um, you, you can maybe you can go to the uh, to the previous one. one. Yes, mm -hmm. the previous one. Um, so this is the main entrance of the reclusion, and um, it is uh, it was also the place um, of uh, a lot of pictures. Um, quite every tourist went there, and just um, yes. <laughs> In line, you know, in line in, in front of uh, the, the the entrance, and with the sign "reclusion" above them, and this is really a picture that you can see everywhere on uh, social network, on Instagram, and so on. Um, and um, there, uh, one day, uh, uh, we had a little storm, a uh, tropical storm, um, uh, on. Uh, and uh, and um, uh, the islands and the tree that you see on on the left uh, the dark one uh, just uh, fall breath uh, and um, uh, and the, the wall uh, collapsed um, and uh, fall just in one piece um, so it it is interesting. So we can see that um, the uh, the walls uh, were not really um, uh, deeply uh, founded, you know. Um, uh, but now uh, the the wall is um, on the ground, 
the entrance is broken, the sign reclusion is broken in uh, three or four um, uh, parts. And um, the question when you um, have to take care of uh, this uh, site, of these buildings, is what can we do now? What do we, uh, what we choose to do? Um, uh, um, we cannot um, uh, live this like that because uh, if people walk on the remain, uh, they can break a leg and it's uh, you know it's dangerous and then you can be a uh, sue and uh, have problems. <laughs> so we have to um, uh, think about the security of the tourists. Uh, we have to think about um, the history of the site. Uh, we have to think about money also. Uh, so it um, it's not um, really a simple choice. Um, and uh, what you said was really important because uh, Saint Joseph and all the site of penal colonies, they are dynamic spaces. So the, um, their history is still going on. Um, and as an archaeologist, I am, uh, I would, I will like to choose to let this wall down, uh, to clean up a little bit. Um, but explaining, uh, the truth that this time nature was, uh, stronger and, uh, <laughs> Mm -hmm. we 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 couldn't face we couldn't prevent this um uh this event and uh so um, maybe we can um we can fix the sign reclusion because it's really um uh it's a powerful sign uh but the wall uh i i personally would prefer to let him down uh, but it's really a debate, and I know that some colleagues here are not, um, they, they disagree uh, with uh, that choice, and I think we are going to argue a lot with um, the architects of uh, historical monuments and all the uh, services of the uh, um, cultural ministry. Um, but it's... Um, Unfortunately, we have the same uh, case this year on Ile Royale. And I think it's going to be um, a question that comes, I hope not every year, but often. So we have to, to, to choose uh, what, uh, what do we want to, to, to have, uh, if we want to have a site, a frozen site, like Claire was uh, saying, uh, frozen site with a, like something really uh, acad academic in a uh, bad way of thinking it's just frozen and one way of thinking just let let the site uh, and with no life inside and I'm not fond of uh, of, let, of, of a frozen site so <laughs> <laughs> It also really strikes me that, or even though I have a sort of pang of regret at, at seeing this broken, you know, <laughs> in spite of what I've said about trying to let sites um, kind of evolve and deteriorate, but uh, just because of, you know, feeling a uh, fondness about having visited it. But this strikes me that it would be a site that, I don't know, in a sort of whimsical way, like, Banyards who were imprisoned at this place would have longed to see, in a way, this kind of symbolic collapse and deterioration of the site, you know, to imagine a world after the prison, to imagine a time when it's no longer a prison and when it's falling, falling to pieces. I think it's quite provocative in that sense. And it can remind us, right, that, that old prison prison regimes, prison colonies, specific prison sites, but also the larger regimes that bring them into being and continue to, to reproduce them, they, they're not 
endless. They, the regime also comes to an end. The, or the government policy also comes to an end. It, it could help us to uh, imagine perhaps, you know, more endings to penal regimes and facilities, which I think is quite a good, you know, idea to try to incorporate into how we can respond to and imagine heritage sites that this isn't preserved because we well it will it will different people will bring different values to it um but to me it's not preserved because we want to remember some sort of um glory moment of you know french carceral system but it's to remind us that these systems come to an end. Yes. <laughs> so we have this house, I think our last image to, um, it's a very, uh, already you can talk about the, this particular <laughs> photo yeah. that gave us, ah. gave us an overview of the cells. It's um, a photo uh, which was taken by the, by the, the space center because they um, they made um, a lot of photographs with a um, helicopter. So mm -hmm. I I have the chance to to have a lot of beautiful pictures like this one, and um, I like this one because you can really see uh, the cells um, as with another view of. Uh, every cells and with an overview of this um, balance between um, walls and trees and it's really uh, really interesting to to have this view and um, we were talk talking about um, uh, this great great project uh, to build a bridge over this building um, so there is this this project uh, which was decide before uh, I um, I arrive uh, in uh, this in the association and um, the project is really to to have a bridge over the the entire building so uh, from uh, from the the top of the pictures to uh, the bottom of the picture you see just like really a bridge over the, the building um, it was to prevent people to go inside the cells mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to experiment the visit of uh, the cells. Um, now we are thinking uh, uh, really um, in a different way because um, the cells have been um, uh, cleaned up by uh, uh, the people working on Saint Joseph, so the military people working on Saint Joseph. Uh, so. Uh, tourists can go inside the cells, uh, and um, I personally, I'm not fond of uh, this project of bridge because I think it's going to be uh, an overview, but a fake overview of the cells. If we want to have an overview, we can um, uh, we can re rebuild the ancient the ancient way of walking. Uh, upon the cells, and you can see the bridge, the ancient bridge uh, uh, on the picture. Uh, you can see the bridge and the remain of the, um, of the barrier. Uh, uh, so we can, I think, we we have a um, better overview, and uh, uh, it will be more uh, historical uh, uh, approach to to guide the tourists uh, on the way the guards were uh, um, looking at the prisoners. Uh, yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, the project of bridge is a really, really expensive one. And I prefer add this money to <laughs> make something else. <laughs> but that's, I think that yeah. would be an extraordinary thing actually to have something like, as you say, that kind of visual experience that the guards were having of patrolling people from above, dominating them from above, um, 
you know, and supervising them being that kind of surveillance gaze of the prison, but in this very physical way that you can't, as far as I could tell, you can't really approximate when you visit. But to me, that would re be really valuable potentially because I think one of the things or one of the stories um, that you can tell about the penal colony in general, but also, you know, people's lives in this on these islands were, were difficult, even if they were a guard um, or a, a, a wife of a guard who yeah. sometimes were living there as well. Um, and I would see a story as uh, of kind of being able to understand something of their perspective and that they are people who are also enlisted into the repressive apparatus of the penal colony right, in ways that I think shouldn't happen. Um, but, the, you know, they are also, we, we perhaps are used to thinking of them as in a hierarchy, that they're the ones who torment the prisoners. No, but I, I would see them as also being, you know, unjustly brought into the mechanism of the penal colony. And to be able to have an understanding or a sense of the perspective of the guard, I think could be extremely valuable in a place like Saint Joseph. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, re I'm really, really uh, moved by what you say because uh, Samuel knows that my great, great, great father was guard in Saint Joseph. So it's, <laughs> it's really interesting what you said, and I think also that uh, having the point of view of, um, uh, you know, uh, making research as Samuel. Uh, uh, is doing, is finishing now uh, on on the um, guards and uh, why they were here, how they live. Um, so uh, it's really interesting. So we are not um, in a site only uh, with the prisoners. There were also guards, wives, uh, children, um, and. Uh, also um, religious uh, people so it's a, a really a, like a, a world in itself mm -hmm. yes but it's I, I also uh, I agree with uh, all of you said and it's very inter interesting Claire but I I think I also um, Understand when in the beginning you you said uh, already that you were not very fond of this perspective of this uh, construction of this bridge, and uh, yeah. yes, because it's uh, it's it remind us also this ocular center perspective, this uh, this uh, this uh, desire to have an overview to see always searching. To embrace everything, to see everything. Panoptic, panoptic, yes. Yes, and at the same time, not uh, having this um, this uh, sensi sens sensor sensorial perspective that you had when you when you go and you walk into the into the cells in the corridors. So you would lose these uh, these touching things, right? This experience of embodied experience of walking, if you have think, only this uh, this uh, se ocular center perspective, <laughs> yes. I think I think it's a question of keeping um, human perspective. Mm -hmm. So yes, human human as as the prisoners were uh, experiencing it inside the cells, human as the guards were experiencing it on the little, little way uh, above, but not um, as a, a huge bridge, bridge over everything, uh, because the, the, the first project, the project of, of bridge, uh, it was um, a really, really high one. So it, mm. it was a non-human perspective, just like a yes. helicopter. And that's, that's not, um, I think that's not appropriate on this side because uh, there is no more sensation as you said yes no more. yes and it's, an, it's a huge distance be, be, uh, between yes. the viewer and the, the world that is being uh, viewing 
view and, exactly. and also like already said and and i thank you how much i thank her and uh, to, to remind this fact how much it was on also also an history of of people of free people there uh, working there and um but i think it's it's not a good way to 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 fill the guard position and role by making this uh, um, panoptic experience because it's the worst it's it's a form of deshumanization of them it's it's their role in the most disciplinary way you know and 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 it, and it keeps them into into this very tiny place they are in of cruel cruelty and and everything which is al already there in the imaginaries and to insist there much more about it is i think a bit si uh, way to participate <laughs> to simplification of memories you know and so on like i think the symmetry experience is much more revealing in this way you know mm -hmm. um but yes, it's it's a very hard memory. This kind of, this question of the guards and and their families, because nobody wants to share this memory for sure. And in 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 fact, this memory is hard to 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 develop in a way that it was yes indeed participants to to this institution, which is not. Um, uh, the, the pride for for uh, for the republic and um, and I think like Il du Salut is the, be the I think the best uh, place to to share this memory because um, this shared experience of cemeteries uh, of housing of Saint Joseph all these all these things make a good experience of that. As, as a researcher of this, I think the, the way it is done now is very good to 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 to, to have in, in conscience there was there were on, not only inmates there, but uh, other people which had their, their their suffering too. Which it was a human history, not because this question of disciplinarization dehumanize things like very very strongly, and there were human beings there walking there and uh, yes I f it's it's a complex question and uh, I, I love the way you can go in in the islands for now uh, it's sufficient uh, and it's good not to have built this bridge to, in my opinion I think it can certainly become uh, a very forced type of visitor experience uh, when you are invited to kind of either pretend or through some kind of you know pieces of information or roles that you're given um, in more interactive experiences you know where you're, you're sort of quite narrowly invited to identify with particular um, perspectives of people uh, whether they're sort of uh, fictionalized or you know closely based on historical information I think it can be a bit can be very effective form of instruction I suppose you know in some ways but I favor a, a more an approach that kind of gives the the viewer more scope to form their own interpretation so yeah there can be a real hazard I think to kind of making experiences of heritage sites like that a, a little bit into a, a sort of theme park experience which is you know then quite troubling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sorry it yeah. likes in the french guiana zoo like it would be a bit like this like you know you go, it's, it's for, and okay it's not appropriate i think so let's let's conclude together on with some words maybe glory We cannot no longer see the, the the final questions that we thought about. Ah, I think Samuel have ah. some technical issues, so uh, you can so it go. Was just to the, the, the last slide. <laughs> the last slide. Yes. Thinking about the future of the site was one of the ideas. Yes. 
one of the ideas. <laughs> I'm very sorry, I closed the window instead of going on. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to share the the the, win, the last slide. How can we move forward with this? So for uh, I don't I don't like the the word conclude because <laughs> it's not about the conclusions of all of this is a uh, complexity of Saint Joseph uh, like Aurélie said uh, is a is a dynamic uh, place that are and we have to think also in a creative and dynamic way so we would like just uh, to talk about um, we, we already start to talk about the physical future of Saint Joseph uh, with Aurélie, but why um, Saint Joseph from the perspective of its visitors, because it's uh, one of your actions also there, uh, and if we can reinventing a language to talk about Saint Joseph, that is not just, uh, like we said, uh, a distinctions or about uh, uh, the guards on Banya, about the, the nature and the ruins, about the, just not in that way, in, in uh, that, how can we uh, think of new ways of uh, talk about that? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's important to, to um, uh, have um, a, a discussion on uh, the perspective of, of the visitors of Saint Joseph, because when you are on the site and when you look, when you look at the visitors, uh, you can see, as Claire was saying, that um, a lot of them just pass through the buildings without um, uh, knowing something about it. It's just. Uh, People on the boat uh, have, have, have told me I have to go to the reclusion, so I go to the reclusion, see the buildings, and then I uh, took my uh, my barbecue, my beers, and uh, go to the picnic on the beach. Um, so, my uh, in my point of view, people don't see uh, the remain of the penal colony in Guyana as um, a site that you should respect or that you should um, as a, um, uh, a memory place uh, of um, of French history. Um, there is a, a too much negative feelings uh, about uh, the penal colony and the remains of the penal colony. Um, there is um, not enough um, uh, uh, talking about uh, this history uh, in schools and uh, at different level of our French school. So uh, lack of information uh, conduct to a lack of respect. And I was really surprised uh, when I began to work on uh, Salvation Island, uh, when I saw a woman uh, uh, visiting the museum in Bikini. And I was really surprised and shocked uh, because uh, in every museum of the world, I don't think that anybody could enter in a museum uh, wearing only a bikini. Uh, or uh, And in the same way, uh, visitors uh, can enter in the cells uh, wearing only uh, bath suits and bikinis uh, and took pictures inside the cells um, uh, wearing only bikinis. So it's like a touristic picture without all the historic background. And um, I think sometimes, sometimes it's just an innocent picture like you, you take, but sometimes it show, it show us that um, People don't have any respect for the site, and that's why also uh, a lot of them um, uh, do graffiti. Uh, they, uh, they draw graffitis on the walls, 
uh, uh, or um, there is still bricks and uh, stones and so on. Uh, so, from the big perspective of the visitors, Saint Joseph is uh, obviously more a touristic place, um, exotic place, as we said, than an historic one. And I think we have a lot of work to do to um, not to uh, avoid the exotic uh, place, but to balance, just always the problem of balance, but to bal balance between uh, the touristic um, way of visiting and the historic way of visiting. Some last words, Claire, maybe, or maybe not. I think that's, I, 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 I'm always really troubled by these um, debates, actually, because I get, I pull in two directions. I'm always very torn. And I think we have such strongly coded social expectations about kind of proper behavior. And in some ways, I want to push against that and say a person who is visiting a site you know and behaving in a way that I perhaps would not um, is they you know they may be taking away a very rich a meaningful inner experience going and discussing it with people that they know thinking about it reflecting on it later you know behaviors that go beyond the immediate behavior of how they how they behaved at the site on a particular day but I also don't want to get rid of that sense of actually do we um, think it's valuable to show some sort of reverence or respect or deference to a, a historical site like this at which we are aware that not just great suffering took place here as it does all over the world because history unfolds everywhere but in a place that was institutionally intended to cause great suffering uh, on, on an extended basis in the lives of the people who are here. So I, I'm inclined, you know, this is a very academic uh, luxury that you can just sit on the fence and have your opinion. You don't have to <laughs> put it into practice, but I, I'm, I agree that there is scope to draw out perhaps more awareness of the historical import of the place. Um, but I also, I think there's something precious about the ability of people to visit it as part of um, a more informal leisure kind of experience that it is part of life the encounter with the place is mixed it's combined you know with with the business of spending time with your friends your family with pursuing leisure with not being at work with enjoying the beauty of the environment all simultaneously. That was part of what I was wanting to encapsulate in the collages that I made was that kind of sense of multiple meanings existing alongside and kind of jostling for our attention, you know, rather than wanting to put forward one authoritative or ultimately true narrative about the place. Yes, I think there also the artistic perspective is so, there are so many in, uh, ways also of working that in the artist perspective, yours or uh, with soundscape also and the um, témoignage, the bagnard. And uh, I've been listening to and um, very interesting things that uh, just talk about different perspectives, different meanings, but we also, we have to accept what, what we find there in, uh, in this particular place that is very different from the Les Iles Le, uh, Saint Laurent du Maroni, for, for instance, uh, that is organized, clean, that we can visit in a different way, but probably the richness of these of Saint Joseph it's uh, these um, 
this living space it's so alive by this manner this cre i i would say creative ways of uh, remember as that our life is creative our life uh, also finds uh, ways of uh, new forms new ways of existing that we could not uh, think about it <laughs> and uh, it's not a question like we say, like we we have said during this conversation it's a, se a separation with the nature and ruins but uh, accepting the organ organic life of this place but at the same time and we have to respect that respect the ruins respect the meanings and also respecting nature like a natural heritage also mm -hmm. in the times uh, of the audio guides and uh, the guided lines in the museums like uh, uh, saint joseph is a real treasure like and uh, mm -hmm. many thanks for both of you Firstly, for already to make it living and um, and so and giving so, so fertile um, expertise and, and reflection on, on the place she is working on without any dogma and I don't know what. So thank you for sharing with us uh, modest academics, uh, which are not in the, in the fields each day. And and and, and many thanks, Aurélie. It was amazing to, to 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 have you in, in this conference thank you for claire for sharing with us like the the, the high you had there and uh, and the work you you did like and with your general view of all these sites in the world you have a chance to because i, I didn't say claire is a great traveler of time in the in the french uh, empire and which is a good way to to have a good look mm -hmm. on, on, on the object also. Mm -hmm. And many thanks to for Gloria to have um, led uh, scientifically okay. this, this seminar and uh, have shared with us like so many years of reflections about the space and how to look on, on a space and uh, how to have shared with me so, so soon our emotion after a visit which was on Christmas Day, and it was uh, very, very, very deep to, to 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 talk with you about this experience. And it's a, it's a good good feeling to have this this seminar two years and a half after having starting this <laughs> common conversation, <laughs> which which is a very 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 long conversation between us. So it was just a little part of and public part of uh, many hours like we have today. Uh, so and many thanks also for the for the, aud the audience because anything is possible without people who, who share with us uh, our interests. And uh, the Copal group is waiting for you next week with a conference about women in prison with four women uh, scientists, women. Uh, women, uh, we are going to share many things, very large presentation this time, not uh, geographical tiny space like today, but a very large scape. So many thanks. And uh, yeah, finally, it was two words seminar, but very fertile uh, discussion. See you soon. And again, thank you on the name of all the group. Thank you, Samuel. Thank you.